What's going on, Jigsaw? We all know that minerals are the key to the proper electrical current within our body. But what about when it comes down to a low-carb diet? I've talked about some things before, but let's talk about specifically how the kidneys, how insulin, and how carbohydrates all work together in harmony, or lack thereof, to really make our lives amazing, or ultimately not. So let's talk about ketosis and dehydration. So when you're on a low-carb diet, you usually feel a little bit dehydrated. You might wonder, why am I urinating all the time? Or why do I need to drink a lot more water just to feel like I'm hydrated? Well, the answer is actually very simple and very practical. We know how the kidneys work and how carbohydrates work with response to insulin. Okay, whenever you consume a carbohydrate and it is stored in the form of glycogen, glycogen, of course, being the carbohydrates that are stored in our muscles, we end up holding approximately three to four grams of water. Why do we do this? Well, it's not just because carbs are like starches that absorb water, it's more so because carbohydrates cause a spike in insulin, and insulin tells the kidneys to hold on to water. Now, there are a multitude of reasons as to why this occurs, but we don't need to go into elaborate detail there. All we need to know is that when we consume carbohydrates, we end up spiking our insulin, and insulin communicates with the kidneys to say, hey, I wanna hold on to this sodium. And it has to do a lot of times with just electrolyte balancing and the additional water that is required for internal leverage with that glycogen. But again, story for another day. So as our insulin levels drop and as our glycogen stores slowly start to deplete as we're on a low carb or ketogenic diet, the kidneys no longer send the signal to hold on to sodium and water quite as much. They start allowing the body to excrete it. So this is a natural thing that is actually pretty darn cool. And it's one of the reasons why when you first start a ketogenic diet, you feel so much better. A lot of times you're losing some of that edema, you're losing some of that inflammation that's associated with higher sodium consumption, which is quite honestly what a lot of us are consuming. We're consuming a lot of sodium and processed foods, and when we get rid of the body's ability to hold on to that, we feel a lot better, and quite honestly, we look a lot better, and we might even reflect a little bit of a lighter weight on the scale. Now, where this starts to become a problem is when it goes a little too far. You see, the kidneys are now no longer telling the body to hold on to sodium and water, so the body's just excreting it. That's why you're peeing so much. But you're not just losing water, you're losing more sodium. And it's this vicious cycle. So now you've lost water, you're already dehydrated, but now you're losing sodium. So any little bit of chance that your body could have to hold on to water is already starting to go. And if you're not adding it back in, then you run into another problem, and that's the fact that most of the ketogenic foods that people eat, bacon, things like that, cheese, they all have very low quality sodiums in them, very low quality salt. We're talking about unopposed sodium, which you hear me talk about a lot. That means straight up iodized salt, table salt, total garbage that doesn't have the plethora of minerals that's required to keep a nice homeostasis of minerals. So we deplete all our good minerals, and we replenish them with bacon minerals. I'm just gonna call them bacon minerals because it's just cruddy, cruddy salt. So then we have this gross imbalance. We have a lot of this weird unopposed sodium that's causing us to hold water in weird places. And then we're losing our potassium, we're losing our magnesium, we're losing some of these other minerals. So we're completely thrown off kilter and we lose our electrical system. We lose our ability to really have our nerves fire and function in a proper way. I've talked about this before, but maybe when you're working out on a low carb diet, you feel like you have energy, but it's like you can't make the mental connection to your muscle. It's like you try to lift or you try to squat, or you try to do anything like that, and you're just not feeling it. It's just not happening. And that's a lot of times because you're losing that neural connectivity because the electrical system of your body is thrown off because you have electrical currents that are not operating the right way. This will not only cause you to feel weak, but it's also gonna make your brain function weird, which is exactly why people end up getting a keto flu. It's an electrolyte imbalance and your body's just not adjusted to your kidneys excreting a lot of sodium because of the lack of insulin. Now, additionally, you get dehydrated because you're simply not going to want to drink as much. Even though you need to be drinking more water, your levels of cholecystokine and your levels of all kinds of other hormones that cause you to wanna to eat and drink are usually suppressed. Your appetite goes down, so therefore your appetite for water goes down. You also don't have starches sitting in your gut. Okay, even though starches are not the reason that carbohydrates cause us to hold water, they still have an effect like that in the stomach. It's like pouring water into bread. It's gonna soak it up. So if you're consuming some starches, it's gonna soak up some of the water in your stomach, in your digestive system. Well, therefore, you're gonna get thirsty. You're gonna to wanna to drink more water. So it's pretty simple that you're gonna drink more water along with carbohydrates. It's not that appetizing to think about drinking a quart of water along with your macadamia nuts and your avocado oil. Okay, just doesn't sound appealing. So what do you do? How do you combat this ketosis or low carb dehydration so you can truly feel your best and not feel like you're really just slumping along with no electrical current running through your body? 
Well, of course, the main thing is you need to add some sodium to your diet in a high quality way. Okay, Himalayan pink salt, truffle salt, Brazilian sea salt, things like that that have a plethora of different minerals, not iodized table salt. So doing this is going to help you immensely. And yes, the numbers need to be a little bit higher than they ordinarily would. Okay, you need to go like three to five grams, three to 5,000 milligrams of sodium per day to keep yourself adequately hydrated and keep your mineral balance where it needs to be. Very, very important on a low carb diet. Now, additionally, you wanna be allocating the sodium to the morning as much as you can. And this again has to do with the adrenals, it has to do with the kidneys. Our adrenals and our kidneys are functioning a little bit more efficiently in a slightly different way in the morning. So if you add some sodium in the morning, it's gonna allow your body to utilize the kidneys and utilize the adrenals a little bit better. Therefore, making it so that you don't have the negative implications of a low carb diet and dehydration later on in the day. And additionally, if you know you're going to be working out, if you know you're gonna be exerting some energy, even if it's just carrying some boxes or lugging something around, you need to load up on sodium before then, okay? Anytime you start to sweat, you are depleting your stores of sodium. And ordinarily, your kidneys are going to be able to process and tell you to hold on to more. But remember, you're losing that mechanism on a low carb diet. So any sodium you lose through sweating, you're gonna actively have to replenish afterwards better off to just replenish it beforehand because then not only do you already kind of have this uh, almost preloading, but you also give yourself an energy boost because now you're giving yourself the electrical current to help you through that. So that's why I use a little pinch of pink Himalayan salt before I work out. Even if I'm totally fasted, it helps me out immensely. It makes a big difference. I feel like I actually get a little bit more of a pump. And I also feel like I get the right blood flow and nutrient delivery. But more importantly, I feel like my brain is communicating with my muscles, which quite honestly is kind of important if you're working out. And then last but not least, this is more so just so you don't feel miserable, any carbs that you do consume, whether it's an accident or whether it's planned or whether it's a scheduled refeed meal, keep your sodium levels lower, okay? Because you, when you have those carbohydrates, your insulin sensitivity is gonna be very high, which means your kidneys are just gonna be standing guard ready to hold on to sodium. Have you ever noticed that it doesn't take much when you have a cheat meal to hold on to a ton of water? Well, it's not so much that you had a cheat meal, it's more so that you combine carbohydrates and sodium and your kidneys are saying, ha ha, okay, insulin sensitivity is high, let's hold on to as much sodium as possible, makes you puffy and moon-faced the next day. That's what's going on, and that's what you have to be cognizant of. So cheat meal, carbohydrates, keep the sodium out of the equation. But at least now you know what's happening and why you're dehydrated, and you can start taking the process and taking the proper measures to make sure it doesn't become a bigger problem. So you know you're losing sodium, but you're also losing all those other minerals. So if you wanna make sure that you're keeping the proper balance with that salt that you're adding to the diet, make sure you head on over to Jigsaw and pick up some Mag SRT so you have that sustained released energy that you need through proper mineral absorption. And have I mentioned already that we published a clinical trial and we have found 22% increase in serum magnesium, 30% increase in magnesium RBC, and 63% decrease in magnesium deficiency symptoms. So click on the link and get your bottle today. See you soon.